Hello and welcome to this video on changing the subject where the subject appears multiple times. Now if you watched a previous video on changing the subject, we saw that changing the subject just means to make that variable on its own on one side of the equation only. So if we want to make x a subject of this, we need to get x on its own on one side of the equation only. Now the reason this is more challenging is because the subject, x in this case, appears more than one time. So let me show you the strategy behind questions like this. And the steps are basically this. So step one is isolate the subject, in this case x, on one side of the equation. Now in this particular case, x is only on one side of the equation. So we have done step one, it's isolated on one side of the equation. So then we do step two, which is to factorise out the subject. So if we do that here, well, we can factorise out the x, so we could write y is equal to x brackets, and then, well, x times what is ax? Well, it's a, and x times what is bx? Well, it's plus b. So we can see that would expand to that. We factorise that to get that. Now, the reason why we did that is because now the subject, x, only appears once, and therefore, it's just like a problem we would have seen in the previous video where the subject only appeared once. So we think, what's happening to x? It's being multiplied by all of a plus b. So to get rid of that, times by a plus b, we divide both sides by a plus b, so we get y over a plus b is equal to x. And now, look, x is on its own on one side of the equation only, so we have completed the question. Let's try that strategy with some of these others. We've got y is equal to 4x squared minus pi x squared. So, step one is already done because x only appears on one side of the equation. And then we do step two, which is to factorise out the subject. Now this time, notice that we can actually factorise out x squared. So if we do that, x squared brackets, x squared times 4 is 4x squared, minus x squared times pi is pi x squared. And then x is being squared, we're timesing it by 4 minus pi. The last thing we did was times by 4 minus pi, so we divide by 4 minus pi, both sides. And that gets rid of the times by 4 minus pi to get just x squared. And then, well, x is being squared, so to undo the squared, we just square root both sides. So we get the square root of y over 4 minus pi is equal to x. And make sure that square root is over the whole fraction. And do you remember from the previous video, we should technically put plus or minus on the front, but I'm not going to go into that again. What about the third one? So we've got y is equal to x plus 2 over x minus 3. Now, we want to do step one, isolate the subject, x in this case, on one side of the equation. Now, at the moment, x is sort of like stuck in a fraction. So in general, whenever you have a fraction in the equation, you should multiply by whatever denominator you have. So we're going to multiply both sides by x minus 3. So then the left-hand side becomes y brackets x minus 3, because we times it by x minus 3. And when we times this by x minus 3, it cancels out the divide by x minus 3, leaving just x plus 2. So we have x plus 2. Now x is still not isolated on one side. We haven't done step 1 yet. Uh, now we've got brackets. We should probably expand those out to kind of try and free up the x. Um, so we do y times x, which is yx, or xy. We should put them in alphabetical order. And y times minus 3 is minus 3y. And now, because the x terms are all kind of freed up, there's no brackets, there's no fractions they're stuck in, it makes it easier to isolate the subject on one side. So we want the x's on one side. Um, should we put the x's on the left side or the right side? Well, it's probably easy to put on the left-hand side because we're going to end up with less negative terms. You'll see in a second. So if we want all the x terms on the left-hand side, we don't want that x term here. So we're going to subtract x from both sides. So we get xy minus 3y minus x is equal to 2. And then if we want the x terms on one side, we don't want the non-x terms here, so we're going to add 3y to get rid of that minus 3y. So we get 2 plus 3y. And if it was me, I would go straight from this step to this step. So I would subtract x and then add 3y at the same time to move it over here. So now all the x terms are isolated on one side and the non-x terms on the other side. So now we can do step 2. Because we've isolated the subject, we now factorise out the subject. So we factorise out x, getting y minus 1 is equal to 2 plus 3y. 
Now, x is being multiplied by y minus 1. So to get rid of the times by y minus 1, we divide both sides by y minus 1. And we are done, because now x only appears on one side of the equation. What about 5? So we've got x over x minus 1 is equal to a over b. Now, do you remember from the previous video that I said that if you have a fraction on both sides of the equation and nothing else, you're not adding anything else after, we can use something called cross-multiplying. And the way it works, if we just do that times that, is equal to that times that. So we get this kind of cross effect. So we do x times b, bx, is equal to a times x minus 1. I'm going to write a brackets x minus 1. We want to free up all the x terms, so let's expand out those brackets. Now we want to isolate the x terms on one side. So what I'm going to do, well I could subtract the ax, and I've got bx minus ax equals minus a, but I want to try and minimise the number of negative symbols I'm going to have. So I'm going to put the x terms on the right hand side, so I'm going to do ax and subtract the bx from both sides, and then we don't want the non-x terms on the, on the right hand side, so I'm going to add a to move that over here. And that's just going to be a bit tidier than if we wrote bx minus ax equals minus a, because now we've got less negative symbols floating about. Now we've done step one, we've isolated the subject on one side, so we now factorise out the subject. So we factorise out the x, get a minus b, and now, because x only appears once, it's been multiplied by a minus b, so we divide both sides by a minus b, and we are done. So let's finish by doing these test your understanding questions. So we've got, make t the subject of 5t plus 3 is equal to 4wt plus t. And then we've got this second harder one, which is make y the subject of x equals root y plus 1 over y minus 2. So you may want to pause the video now to have a go at these. Right, let's do it. So, step 1, remember, was to isolate the subject, in this case t, on one side of the equation. Now to do that, we first want to kind of get rid of the brackets, we free up the t terms. So let's do that, 5t plus 3 is equal to, well, 4w times t is 4wt, and 4w times 2 is plus 8w. Now, we want to get all the t terms on one side. So let's get the t terms on the left side. So I'm going to subtract the 4wt to move it to the left-hand side. Now, I don't want any non-t terms on the left-hand side, so I'm going to subtract 3 at the same time to get it on the right-hand side. You may want to go from here to here in two steps, but if you can do it, it's quite nice to do this in one step. So all the t terms are now isolated on the left-hand side. We've got no t terms here, have we? So then it means we can factorise out the t to get 5 minus 4w equals 8w minus 3. And then t is being multiplied by 5 minus 4w. So you undo it by dividing by 5 minus 4w. And we are done because t is isolated on one side of the equation and it's not on the other side of the equation. What about this one? We want to make y the subject. So we want to free up all the y terms first. So let's get rid of that square root because that was the last thing that happened on the right hand side. So we've got x squared is y plus 1 over y minus 2. Now y is still kind of trapped inside this fraction, so let's multiply both sides by y minus 2. Now y is still trapped in a bracket, so let's multiply out the bracket to get x squared y minus 2x squared equals y plus 1. And we want to isolate all the y terms on one side. So let's isolate them on the left-hand side. So I don't want the y on the right-hand side, so I'm going to subtract y. And this term is not a y term, so I'm going to add it to move it to the other side. So we've got 1 plus 2x squared. Now the y terms are isolated on the left-hand side, so we now factorise. y brackets x squared minus 1 is equal to 1 plus 2x squared. And we can now finally divide by the x squared minus 1 to get 1 plus 2x squared over x squared minus 1. You may have got minus 1 minus 2x squared over 1 minus x squared which would be less tidy, but technically correct. So well done if you got that right.